Hi everyone, Massimo here from the Blue Root team. And today I'm gonna show you something that is really valuable and that is how to automate a welcome email or a new lead email or whatever you may call it when someone enters into your CRM. So it, it, it's a really cool feature of Zoho CRM. It's quite easy to set up, but not a lot of people know how to do it. And so in today's video, I'm gonna walk through how to set up this workflow, some watch outs when you're setting it up, some things in the settings that you should keep an eye on. And lastly, how to actually build the email template and some tips and tricks on that that I've seen throughout my career here. As always, please like and comment and subscribe to our channel. We love answering the comments and interacting with our clients. And also feel free to join my office hours. A lot more of you have been showing up to those there every week. You can join the call. It's no obligation. You can ask me any question that maybe my YouTube video doesn't answer. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Okay, let's get into this. So within the CRM, the first area you're gonna to wanna to go to do all of this is in the settings. So if you go to settings here or the little gear icon in the top right, you'll see this page. Where we're gonna be doing all of these actions is in the workflow rule tab. In this system, you can see along the top, I have deals and contacts and accounts, etc. You may also have leads. A lot of the systems we work with, we get rid of leads. If you have leads, you can do this whole tutorial based on leads instead of contacts. I'm going to go through contacts, but it's the exact same thing. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to create rule. You're going to name it something. So you're going to choose the module. Maybe you choose leads. Maybe you choose contacts. And then you're going to name it something. So you would say uh, uh, new lead welcome for example, you're gonna hit next. So now at this stage, in theory, these leads are gonna be coming from the web, right? Or from some outside source, and that's why they're gonna be getting this automated email. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose on record action and you're gonna choose create. The reason you choose create is you probably only want this to trigger once on create. You don't necessarily want it to trigger on edit or on create or edit, because in theory, this lead is writing in, they've never heard of you, so it should be on create. They're being created for the first time. The second step you should do is keep in mind that the way I've set up this rule now is on create, this will trigger for all leads or contacts, right? So you may want to get a bit more specific here. And the most typical way we see people get specific on this is by lead source. So you would say source, you can type and choose it. And then maybe you would say is, and typically you should have some type of web or website or web research or whatever. And so what you're doing here is you're limiting who this goes to because you don't necessarily like, let's pretend I'm on the phone with someone, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put you in my system. You put them in and then it sends them an email being like, hi, Mike, nice to meet you, book a call with me. Like it seems a bit weird, inauthentic or whatever. So you don't want it to happen for all lead sources, just the web ones, right? So choose web research. The next step you're gonna do is you're gonna choose an email notification, right? And so when you click that, it's gonna bring you through a few steps here. So first off, you gotta name it. So this is actually the notification. So think of it like, it's kind of the wrapper around the email template. So the email notification basically says, who's it gonna to go to? So I'm gonna click here and say, new lead notification. And then you're gonna choose who it goes to, right? And so typically you'll choose the leader contact email, but you could technically click this drop down and choose other people. Like you could technically send it to the owner of the lead. So you could have the owner of the lead also get an email. And so that can be in the contact. You could choose the user and then choose the user here. You could also CC an additional recipient. So maybe you always want to CC, I don't know, some inbox or something. I rarely see this, but I'm going to take this out and go ahead and hit save. So now the contact email is going to get an email. The next step you're going to choose is template. And so this is where I have some tips. So if you don't already have a template built, you're going to have to create one from scratch. So I'll go ahead and click that. On this page, I would always recommend not to use these templates here, especially in these type of automated emails when a new lead comes in. The reason for this is these templates look more email marketing s. They have borders around the outside. They're a bit harder to uh, make look plain. And you want this to look plain text typically anyways. I mean, there are scenarios where you don't, like let's say it's a white paper download and you want it to send people a, uh, a document with the white paper attached. Maybe you do, you want it to look more automated. But what I always recommend is to go here, insert HTML or plain text. So it brings up a plain text editor. And so the next step you have to do is name it. So new lead notification. No one will see this. Like this is an internal naming. After that, subject line. So this one people will see. 
right? So so the the person that wrote in will see this subject line. So you would say thanks for writing in or whatever. And then what you would do is you would actually write the content. So I always recommend addressing them. So by hitting the hashtag, you can actually pull up merge fields. And so from the contact or the lead module, I put in their first name. And then you could do a few more things. But the idea here is to personalize it as much as you can. I would recommend that you put a call to action, maybe book a time with me or something. And if you're using Zoho bookings or Calendly or something like that, you can put the link in there just by using this button here. And at the end, I would always recommend putting your signature. So you can click here and you can go use and then you can go signature. And so it'll dynamically put the signature of the person this lead is assigned to. So it, it looks very personalized. And what you'll get in this email is a very plain text email. So the client will actually think you wrote it, or at least uh, it depends on the content, but at least the visual, they'll think you wrote it. The last step, save it. And now you go back to the workflow and you hit refresh and now it'll actually have that new lead notification. So the final step of this is to actually say who it comes from. So you could say the record owner's email or the current person logged in. Typically it's record owner and then that's dynamic, right? So if you have record owner A, it'll send from that person, record owner B, et cetera. Go ahead and save. So now you've basically created this workflow. Now, a couple of the things you can do here as well is you can actually delay this if you want by a few minutes. I see some clients doing this to make it look more authentic, but if you're in a more higher volume e-commerce type business, I'd recommend doing it instant because people are shopping around, they may leave, but you can do the exact same process here after 10 minutes, right? And one of the things you can also do with these drips, let's say you want to expand this a little bit and have a few emails that come out, is you can actually put some criteria in here and you could say, well, lead source is this and status, typically there's a lead status or a contact status is not, something right so you could put lead status is not contacted as an example so if it's not contacted meaning you haven't reached out to them yet then it will send this email then you could set up another drip two hours later to send another one and another one and then when you go into this lead and you actually change the status to contacted or attempted to contact it'll stop all those timed actions so every time a timed action comes up it checks the criteria if it works then it'll send the time action if it doesn't it won't so this is the way you can make like a little drip to these leads and a lot of people do that so I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the best way to send a welcome email. The tips there are watch out for your lead source, make that more specific so it doesn't happen to everyone. Also make your emails plain text. It looks a lot better. It looks more authentic depending on your use case, right? And then three, you could make a little drip here with a second criteria. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And also I'd love to see you in my office hours. More and more people are coming to those. I love meeting clients and uh, talking about what they may need. Cheers.